afternoon, uh, Jason here from Bohemia Bees. We're here on the Eastern Shore of Maryland, and I'm standing next to what I believe is one of the next style beehives that uh, beekeepers or hobbyist beekeepers will be using here in the next, uh, next few years. Um, I'm gonna show you how we installed this beehive, tell you a little bit about it, go through how it's set up, and then on another video, we'll show you how we install bees in it. And then we'll watch this colony. We have two of them, <clears throat> two hive setups. And we'll watch them through uh, the season comparative to a, a Langstroth style to see how they perform. But I want to introduce you mainly, the uh, designer of this colony is by the name of uh, Mark Waring. He's from New York and um, he designed this uh, hive. It's called the Colony Keeper. He was frustrated like most beekeepers uh, or hobbyist beekeepers uh, that have to maintain colonies over the winter. And naturally, that, that keeping those colonies and having them come out strong was very difficult. The standard Langstroth hive, although for many years, for, for hundreds of years, it's been a, a great solution for beekeepers, but it's not the only solution. There's other types of beehives, the top bar beehive, the, um, there's various other cavity or log style beehives, the natural beehives that people use, cathedral beehives. People have tried everything. You even have probably seen the flow hive, right? Uh, this is just another version of a beehive or setup that a beekeeper uh, has put a lot of passion and time into to build. And he's allowing us here on the Bohemian Apiary to uh, demo it and test it out for him. Uh, as we pursue our master beekeeping certification through the University of Montana, these two hives behind me will be uh, a test that we're doing for Mr. Waring to help him understand the benefits uh, in a documented study uh, to see how they perform. So stick with me here on this video. We're gonna show you how we set this up today, how we, uh, we get it in place. And then on another video, uh, we'll show you how we install bees in it and then we'll watch it throughout the year. We'll, we'll do other videos that talk about how they're building out and what's so unique about it. But uh, let's talk about the construction, the construction of how this is installed here uh, on the next part of the, or the first part of the video, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about how it's set up. So take a quick peek on how we installed this uh, beehive. Okay, our first step was to find a good solid location to put these colonies and then dig a hole. Uh, we just a standard post hole digger and we need to dig down at least three feet to go below the frost line. Um, we're using a two inch pipe here. These are two inch uh, black pipe and um, they have a, a cup link that sits on the end of it to be able to put the pipes from the colony keeper on top. You know, naturally we're gonna dig the hole out uh, three feet down. We're gonna set our pipes in uh, centered. Um, we're gonna be using a quick crete to um, actually stabilize these in the ground. Uh, two, two feet will stick out of the ground, three feet in the ground. Um, I'm gonna pour that in, making sure that these are definitely level before you concrete them in, because you don't want the, the colony keeper to be kind of sideways. So um, once we have it level, we're gonna pour the quick read in, and once we uh, fill it with water, it's about a gallon of water to a 50 pound bag. So we put that in and just let it set overnight. And once they were set up overnight, these were good sound foundations to uh, install our colony keeper on. You know, naturally, we want to make sure that we uh, clean them up a little bit. So we used um, some epoxy, just a standard spray paint epoxy to paint them black. Um, this is just to keep them from any surface rust or just kind of protect them and give them good aesthetics. Uh, we're using a, um, a large PVC cap that has the uh, hole drilled out for the size of the pipe um, for the two inch coupling. Uh, this is just to protect against ants from coming in or pests crawling up into the co colony keeper. Um, we'll use high temp axle grease up under the rim of that. Uh, and so uh, typically once they're all installed, uh, they're, they're, not, they're, they're heavy and they're a little bit bulky, but they're not obnoxiously uh, to the point where you can't move them around. We just use a standard four-wheeler to kind of get them where they needed to be, you know, got them to thread the first time and then spin them around. You know, you can see with, with us spinning them, they can kind of point them in any direction, but we want to spin them several times to kind of lock them down into the cup link. Um, you know, it's, it's not, they're not, again, they're not that heavy, but they definitely want to, uh, they're a little bit bulky and awkward to, you know, you want to take the frames out though, when you're moving them so that there's no, you know, weight to them, there's less weight to them. You can even see my son is helping out. And once you get it threaded, you know, he can, he can actually spin it around and, and, and help you uh, with the, uh, the installation. Uh, not that difficult, but so you can you can see that these two uh, colony keepers are facing a south, the southwest, 
uh, this to get the full sun throughout the day. Okay, we're back here uh, after we've shown you how we installed this. You know, it took about a day or so for us to install it, for the concrete to harden and for us to set it up. Um, you know, it does take a little bit of effort. You saw my son actually the one helping me install it. So it doesn't take too much effort. You know, usually someone uh, with a little bit of, uh, you know, lift and, and focus and time and patience can actually install one of these. Um, but the, everybody's been waiting. What is this beehive? What makes it so unique, right? So, you know, naturally the design is patent pending, right? And he will market these, you know, once he has been able to test them in all his various regions of the country. He's got the, several of them spread across the Northeast and, and other places. That he's testing it out uh, for a, you know a full season through winter and coming out in the spring next year so we're going to definitely continue to keep monitoring this but let's take a look inside at what makes this unique if you notice the design of it is not like your traditional beehive right it almost looks like a tree that's fallen over and i think that's the the idea that mark has come up with in the hollow cavity of a tree so you can imagine it's probably a little hollow inside most state laws require beehives to have removable frames right so we as a beekeeper we use the Langstroth style because the Langstroth or Reverend Langstroth discovered that you know the structure of a beehive needs to be set up such so that there's bee space you have to respect bee space uh, bee space uh, when you're using removable frames in a tight compact box that needs to be you know uh, able to be moved or whether it not uh, be used for honey purposes and harvesting purposes the old style skep uh, type uh, beehive, which I'm gonna, sh which you would see here, and that's what that would look like. Um, that style is an older style that they've used over in Europe for many, many years. They use it early in the colonial days here in the 1620s when they brought the the honeybee to the United States. Um, there were also native bees and other honey type bees uh, here in the U.S. prior to that, but the the European traditional honeybee that you see today, that's pr primarily here that we manage uh, is, is not native to the U.S. It came here in the 1620s by the colonists who recognized the benefits of honey and wax and the other uh, resources that these bees created. Uh, not to get into that, but let's take a look at the hive. You see the structured hive is put on a post. We have it uh, concreted in the ground for stability. Um, we saw in the demonstration of when we installed it, we used that uh, dug a, a three foot hole. We buried this down about 36 inches, poured the concrete in, mixed in. And then we have a cap put on here, uh, really is just a PVC cap, and we'll put some uh, high temp axle grease underneath that cap. That's really just a, an ant or pest mitigation technique so that you know ants don't create a line climbing, climbing up in the colony. Um, if you have a really strong colony, you shouldn't have to worry about that, but sometimes you do. So that's put on prior because it would be a pain to put it on after. Uh, you'll notice that the top over here has a, you know your metal surface. The rain will probably hit the most of this surface here. Um, it's been painted to protect it from that. It's a very sturdy, solid wood, pine, um, as well as um, there's some other components. Uh, recently, we've installed another entrance here on the side. This is so as the bees will build out inside, and once we open it up, you understand, they can actually get into a, a closer distance to the colony installed inside. But the entrance is primarily down here in the bottom. And um, we can show you that as a picture. You see here. And then that's what, where the bees will come and go in the bottom. Uh, they'll go up through the cavity of the tree like they would do in the tree or cavity of the, of the, of the uh, warring hive, uh, the, the, the colony keeper, like they're in the cavity of the tree. So I know the anticipation is waiting. What does it look like inside, you've asked. How do these things work? So let's take a look. They're very easy to open. They have two latches. You can see here, one on one side, one on the other. and you're just gonna lift it out, okay? As you lift it out, you'll notice that the prop bar will drop and that's to stabilize the side. So that means you can do it with one hand, you can lift it and close it. When you see the exposed cavity, you'll see some things going on that are very unique. Let's take and get a closer look inside. Okay, so one thing you'll notice is that the colony has different style frames that you may have seen in the past. You're traditionally Langstroth nine and a half or nine and three quarter inch deep frames will go into a brood box. Some people utilize mediums. These are, are different styles. Um, there's a unit that actually sits on top to help keeps these frames tight against themselves. Um, and this is also doubles as a hanging unit. I haven't put the hooks on it yet, but there's a chain that will hang on this 
so that I'm able to hang on the side and actually hang my frames from it, multiple frames from it if I choose to, as I do my inspections. That's gonna become in pretty handy as you pull these frames out and you see they're a lot of different design than, than most. You know, I'll point out the top has a, a cavity up here. Inside that cavity, we have a thing of burlap, right? So it's a ball of burlap, as you can see in the top, more like a quilt box would be in a traditional Langstroth hive. That keeps the bees from coming up inside the, the top open cavity. Uh, it also allows the, the airflow to be and the moisture to be sucked out of the, ca the, the, uh, the cavity. And due to the angle of the hive, one of the key differences in a Langstroth versus this is the fact that it's sitting sideways at an angle. So the moisture that's built will run out of the hive out of the bottom drip out of the bottom or it will be pulled up in the top so it's absorbed at the top because heat rises and from the cavity or from the colony and then it'll be absorbed and anything that drips down will drip down the bottom half, half instead of dripping directly down on the colony so the overall concept of this without getting into the nuances in my opinion is that the moisture is pulled away from the colony instead of the colony having it dripping directly on top as in a square box when they build the, their ball of cluster in the winter and they make that condensation that will form on the roof of your colony. Um, one thing though, these are, uh, these are entrance reducers, we'll talk about what that is, um, but I wanna show you one of these frames because these are pretty cool. Um, the frames that come out, they're actually, there's no foundation on them. Uh, we might install foundation to see what it looks like just to cut one out, but we'd have to cut one unique because the kit doesn't come with one we would want to see how they would do it if we put foundation in here but all the frames that are in here all lift straight out and it's put in a stair step they build out the comb as they would in a normal colony on this lip edge right here and down these posts that go down the sides so your comb will be drawn out on here and it will allow you to have a natural comb that has the proper segmentation or space or bee space between the actual comb pieces so they don't glue them together and it'll be more like a natural colony. Putting them back in are pretty easy. Again, we've accomplished the removable frame. You saw me take one or a few of them out. When we go on another video, we'll show you how we install a queen and how we install a colony in here. But there are 12 frames, I believe, in here. Um, which gives you the ability to expand out more than a, the surface area of a deep Langstroth hive, 10 frame hive. So the amount of surface area that the bees could build out in here is significantly more. It's about equates to the surface area of a deep and a medium, which is what's really needed in most colonies, um, or probably two supers, really two mediums and a deep, um, or two deeps. That's about the surface area that you get from the comb, and we'll see that once they build that all the way out. Um, they build from, instead of from inside out, they'll build from top down, right? Which is the natural way that a, that a beehive is built or a bee colony is built in the cavity of a tree. Um, they'll usually extend onto it or they'll build from the middle and they'll build all the way out and down rather than forcing them on a rectangular frame and moving from frame out, frame out. It gives the ability for the queen to move freely through that area and allow you to, to do that. Um, the entrance that we have here, again, we've installed so that you can open and close this and allow them to enter at the halfway point of the hive, the sixth frame down, as they build out the colony. So there's less room for them to travel entering in from the bottom. Um, it also allows them just to give them another entrance if they get clogged up um, going in and out, the foragers if they're storing their honey in various frames. Um, again, this is not a really complex design, but I really like the way the structure is built. Uh, hopefully you're gonna be able to join us on our next video as we talk about how we're going to install bees in this colony or in this hive. Uh, this is just our review at the Bohemian Apiary of a unique style beehive called the Warring Hive, made by, by Mark Warring. It's called the Colony Keeper by Mark Warring out of uh, New York. And we really hope that we can uh, get the uh, colony surviving in here. The test that we're gonna do with these hives just to see how they perform is we're gonna have, we have two exact Colony Keeper hives. We have two standard Langstroth setups, and we're actually gonna install uh, no foundation in those Langstroth setups. We might just put in 
one foundation after they get started because we want to keep them consistent but we want to see in those hives how quickly they build out the comb how fast and, and wide in the surface area what is taken up by a brood nest what's taken up by honey and so how thick the comb is we're going to be doing a lot of measurements on these hives um, and hopefully be able to overwinter all of them i'd hope that all of them will survive through the winter but we're really going to let uh, and see if these colony keepers are, are really what they uh, are purported to be by Mr. Waring and see if they keep our bees over the winter. And we may be able to have uh, four strong colonies, uh, but at least hopefully two strong colonies in addition to our other apiary colonies come out of the winter. So that's our review on the uh, structure of the Warren hive. Uh, there's a lot of other pieces and parts that we could get into, but it's not necessary to talk about it on this video. I really just wanted to talk about the structure of the hive, the frames, how to set it up, how to utilize it, show you how easy it is. Um, if you wanted to put it back together, it's very simple to do. Again, these are for the entrance reducers for the front. If you wanted to close it off or put them in, this sits right on top of here. It presses down so it allows it to have pressure to hold those frames in place. And as you can see, there's not much effort for me to lift this door and close it up. Just pick up the one hand and close it up and it aligns and then you can lock it up. So that's our initial setup review and installation of the uh, Colony Keeper. If you like these and you want more information about them, we're just testing them, so I can't necessarily help you with questions specific. Um, I'll put a link or, link or a, a way to reach uh, Mr. Uh, Waring if you're interested in finding more information about these hives. Uh, it's just a different type of style hive um, that we're testing out for him and we're anxious to see how it performs here on the eastern shore of maryland thanks for watching uh here uh again watch our video when we do an installation of the bees and follow us along this season when we watch and maintain these colonies uh the colony keeper by mark warring and we're hopeful for its success thanks for watching everyone have a great day Thanks for watching another Bohemia Apiary video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the alerts button so you're alerted when we have a new video. And remember, beekeeping here is more than a hobby, it's an obsession.